Deborah Manis Gardner. Yay! Deborah Manis Gardner's in the house. Woo! This is Wendy Day, and today we're going to talk about sample clearance. And I have been promising you guys forever that I would learn how to edit video so that I could start interviewing my friends. And here we have Deborah Manis Gardner. Deborah, how are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. Yay! Deborah owns DMG Clearances and DMG Clearances Clear Samples. And um, Deborah, how did you get started in the music industry? Uh, I started in the world of doing music videos, and um, that started me with a company that did just clearances. And this was back in 1990. Oh, wow. And I saw, uh, yeah, and so I saw that there was a there was a huge gap in handling sample clearances. So um, I asked to, to jump into the arena. There was just Madeline Smith on the West Coast handling uh, NWA and Easy E, and Hope Carr and her husband Larry handling. Tommy Boy, I remember and then, them. yeah, and then I jumped in with both my feet because uh, there were no rules about it. So I I was working for a company that said, "Let's do it. I think it's the right thing." They're, you know, I'm fascinated, love the music um, as much as a, I was a, actually a, a punk rocker. You and were a punk rocker. When I met you, you were very much into punk. I love that. <laughs> still am. Still am. Um, but you know, punk and, and hip hop and rap, same thing. Yeah. Fighting the man. <laughs> exactly. Kicking the doors. I love it. Yeah. That's how that's how I started. And so I've been doing it um in my twenty seventh year. Wow. What are some what are some albums that you've cleared? Like what are some projects that you've gotten to work on? Wow. I mean, you know, I handled Biggie, I handled uh Kendrick, I've handled you know, I did handle all Bad Boy. Right. So I did all of the Bad Boy regime. Eminem. Um, Eminem Marshall is my guy. Then, you know, when um, EPMD, you know, and those guys and the DOS effects, and then they discovered Reggie, I handled Red Man and Method Man, Wu Jang Glam. Um, so I handled all the loud records, you know, uh, Big Pun and uh, Exhibit, and oh my gosh. I mean, my website doesn't even, I think, list all the stuff that I, I've handled because it's so many years of, of rap artists right, right. Um, that that people might not even remember. Lost Boys. Um, right. Oh, my gosh. Bad Boy. You know, all of Bad Boy. Bad Boy all, <laughs> the yeah. Sample King. Yeah, Cash Money I handle. Um, Big Beat Records when they were around. Oh, wow. Mafia, Lil' Cam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so before, <laughs> before there's Nicki Minaj, there's Lil' Cam. You know, nice. So I handle her and... Um, Oh my goodness! I mean, I, I just just you know when there was Virgin Records. So when there was you know when when there were more than three labels and we had like twenty labels, right? Uh, I pretty much handled <laughs> everything. You know, Diggable Planets, um, Leaders of the New School, mm. uh, yeah, Tribe wow. Called Quest. I used to handle Jive Records. You know, during that heyday when Shaquille O'Neal had an album, I did Shaquille O'Neal. Kobe Bryant. That. Kobe Bryant had an album. I did that. Um, wow. Damn. So and then so now you've got and, and then it was just it wasn't just hip hop and rap that sampled. You know, I've worked with you two. I've worked with Michael Jackson, Mariah wow. Carey, Jennifer Lopez, um, B fifty twos, Rolling Stones. I mean, sampling is not just an art or a technique or style that's just in the hip hop and rap community. And then when I listen to my alt rock radio station, you know, Sirius Radio, um, and you listen to contemporary music, a lot of times you're hearing Similar sounding stuff, right. but I'm going, say, I'm going to make this statement, but I think it's, you know, racial in that no one would come after a white alternative rock or pop artist as much as rap, although people are going to say, but, you know, Robin right. Thicke crossed over into that black music community, right. and, and I was tied to it, and nobody liked Robin Thicke, um, and who was also my client, and I, I, I think he was innocent, and I... I, I look forward to the appealing of that case. Um, so when but, somebody samples another artist, they have to clear it? Legally? You have to. Legally, you have to. Um, and there's no such thing as a needle drop. And there's no such thing as, you know, like the one second or two second rule. Um, if you lift or sample someone else's song, you need to get permission. Even it's if you're of, giving your music away for free? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. 
That's the biggest misconception, I think, amongst the people I work with, is they think, oh, I'm putting it up for free on Dat Piff. I don't have to clear the sample. Bullshit. You know what? I'm, let's put it this way. I'm really, really poor. I have no money, and I'm super hungry, so I stole that grape because I was really hungry and I needed to eat it. Was it still theft? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. You had a good reason, but of course it's still theft. Right. Yep. So it, it, it's the same theory. So, you know, and then you've got all these mixtapes that are coming out. And, you know, back in the day when you had mixtapes, it was audio cassette tapes being sold in the trunk of a car. Right. The labels were as upset. A mixtape is something that is an audio configuration of some kind, but it's available on the Internet. And we know once something's on the Internet, you can't pull it off the Internet. We can't. It's, it's out there. And so it's out there. And so it really is deemed of value. And, and, and that's why they're going after mixtapes. And they're going after what you're deeming as something free. But let me go even one step further. It's not free. You're making it as a means of promoting yourself. Right. So you're gaining it's, benefit. Is that you are gaining benefit. So it's not free. You're gaining something from it. Right. And so it, it I, 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 and, and I can, don't get me wrong, I can, I can sit on that fence and I can jump on either side. And that's why they don't use me anymore as an expert witness. Right. Because um, I can fight almost any side of an argument. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> and I'm expensive, but no. The last time I That's did funny. it, I you know I I was like you know telling the both attorneys I I can fight both sides of the case if I wanted to. Right. There so is what, there is no right or wrong. I'm sorry. Sometimes there is no right or wrong. Right. Example. It's just it's it's, it's very gray. it's gray. So what is actually sample clearance? Okay. So the word samples has has evolved the sense that came about. Oh. Because now we hear the words interpolation. Right. Uh, you know, uh, a sample initially was lifting a portion of a previously recorded song and incorporating it into a new song. Okay. And so always think of that as the sound recording being sampled. And then remember, if you're using the sound recording, you also have to clear the publishing because they're tied together. Right. There's the master side and publishing side of the song. And so you have to clear both. Um, and the record label usually owns the master and the writer or whoever the writer did a deal with for their publishing owns the publishing. Is that correct? Well, but you, but you go to the publisher. You never go to the writer. Okay. You you have to go to the publisher for consent. Right. So that's one part of publish. That's one part of sampling. And when they've lifted something and they've incorporated it, and then you need to get permission for that. Okay. Other kind which kind of is like the Robin Thicke thing, kind of but not, is an interpolation. That's a new word that they came up with back, I think, in like 1994, 95. I, that word started coming up. I and interpolation that. is when you're just using the composition and you've re-recorded or re-sung the lyrics. Got it. But you haven't used the master. Now what's going on in like 2014, 15, 16 is, you know, People use the word, you know, influence, similarities, all, all that kind of stuff. Where I argue that's not an interpolation. That's not a sample of the composition. It's inspiration. Because it's inspiration. And then we should start looking and arguing about, you know, Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and, you know, a lot of rock and roll because you only have a certain number of notes in, in, in a scale. Right. And, and chords. You know, exactly. It's and limited. so my argument I have with people now is when they um, – when they, when they use an interpolation and use lyrics, when do we deem that as those lyrics actually being copyrighted to a specific song? And can you find prior art? You know, because if there are words in poetry and there are words in, in books, people don't, don't claim that as prior art, but, you know, or, or copyright that. But when it's a song, um, they do. Right. Which is really fascinating if you think about it. You know, as I, you know, there's just so many lyrics that people are like, oh, well, I'm familiar with those lyrics from such and such songs, so that's copyrightable as that person's song. And sometimes they say, well, let's call Dr. Ferrari. Is it really? Right. Is right. it, you know, I, I like and to argue that. Absolutely. It, so, it is. And sometimes things are clear just for safety's sake. Right. Right, right, right. Because you just don't want to get sued down the road. You don't want that bullshit. Right. Um, and, and sometimes sample clearance cases are settled by labels because it's cheaper to pay somebody to go away than is to fight something in court. 
a label can never settle something without artist consent or writer consent. Right. So they don't. So no, a label, when a label gets a claim letter, they immediately turn around and send a letter off to the letter lawyer of the artist and to the publisher of the copyright. Right. But a label can never settle without consent from everyone involved. Thank God. Yeah. Um, how do you how 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 do you clear a sample? Like, what is the process that you go through to do your job? Um, my process is, you know, when a client comes to me and says, "I've sampled Day and Night" by Albie Shore. My first thing is, I'm going to research the song, see who the writers are, see who the publishing is. The publishing is 100% Sony ATV, and um, mm, now I just went blank as to Albie Shore's label. I think was Warner's. Um, and so I would research it and then I would have my client send me a copy of the new song with the sample in it, with information on who's releasing it, his new title, description of the sample, get all that stuff. Because the people on the receiving end at the publishing company label are so overwhelmed, so inundated that you need to hand it to them on a silver platter. Right. You need you make to make it easy. Make it to make it easy for right. them. They, they, they don't have time to really evaluate what it is. You need to tell them what it is and where it's used. Got it. Then they have to turn around and send it out for writer consent or artist consent. Or if it's, you know, if it's Warner's, they might have to go to Atlantic for consent. If it's Universal, they might have to go to Republic or Def Jam for consent. You know, every, they, they have like these main people that you go to, then they have to go out to a whole bunch of other people for consent. Got so it. my okay. job is to, to help facilitate that to the right people with the right information to make it as easy as possible for them. Got it. And when they come back, to try to negotiate the most fair deal. I'm not going to get the lowest quote. I'm going to get the most fair quote. And that's who I'm as a clearance agent. And if you don't like it, then you can use someone else. Got it. Um, but if, if, if you've used a baseline that's used throughout the whole song, don't tell me that it has a value of 10 or 15% of the new composition. Uh, you know, if, if it's a baseline, it might be like 33 and a third to, to 50%, depending on what other elements you've added. And on the master side, don't tell me that you only want to pay like 1% PPD or one, or, 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 or one cent when it's a baseline and it's the body of the song and has a greater value of like maybe 3% or 4%. That's who I am. I'm, right. I'm going to make sure that you get a fair deal. On the flip side, if on the receiving end the publisher says I want 75% of the publishing, I'm going to battle on your behalf to get that as low as possible. Right. And, 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 that's how, and that's my job as the clearance agent. But gotcha. then after I get the approvals in and the quotes in, everyone thinks, oh, that's it, I'm done. No. You know, we've got to get label copy together. We've got to get splits together. We've got to deliver all this stuff. We've got to request contracts. We've got to make payments. On the publishing side, we've got to gather... You know, if the publisher took 33 and a third, I need to find out from you, well, who are the names of the new writers of your song? If the producer did it and you did it and it's only two people, are you guys each splitting at 33 and a third and 33 and three fourths? Because it's got to equal 100. Can't right. be off by one or one. And what's the publishing company? And are you registered? And what's the PRO? And then I have to deliver that to the publisher so they can register it. You can register it and we do contracts. Right. And this is so, all before the music comes out. This is all before... The record hits the streets, right? You have to get the quotes done before it hits the streets. Um, we don't make payments before it hits the streets anymore because when we used to, and then if it didn't hit the street, the labels and publishers didn't return the money. So what a surprise. <laughs> so now we're kind of like, fuck you, you don't get the money in advance. Right. <laughs> so when someone's like, I want to get paid prior to release, I'm like, fuck no. You. So, please. Please. 30 to 60 days. Come on. Just so like anything. What happens, what happens if um, I submit? Um, like, let's say I sampled Anita Baker, who is infamously difficult to clear. What happens if I, if I, if I choose to sample something and then I bring it to you and you go and, and it's not clearable, then what happens? Well, if you come to me with Anita Baker, I'm going to say, what the fuck? Because <laughs> <laughs> Anita Baker is known for not being available for... And always for has been known for that. <laughs> and, and, and has been known for that for 20 some years. Right. Um... And so I'm going to tell you, you have to start over and you need to scrap that song. That's what I'm going to tell you. And if you release it, be prepared for a cease and desist. Could because I do an interpolation instead no. of an actual sample? But if she wrote the song, no. Right. If it's a Nita Baker song that she did not write, then it's a possibility, but we have to see who the writers are. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
Um, it, it, are you also a resource for producers? Like, can a producer build a relationship with you and find out what's easy to clear and what's not easy to clear as he's choosing samples? Or does that if, become a nightmare? If, if I know he's going to hire me, I mean, I, I can't keep doing that for free. You know, I can do research for like $150. I think that's what it says on my website, my email. I don't even know what my fees are anymore. Um, it, and, I, and I do give people advice. But then if I find out that they use someone else to do their work, don't ever contact me again. Right. Yeah, it's called burning a bridge. We discussed that in one of my last videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bridge that you don't ever want to burn because uh, – I've had clients send work to me and another parent's agent to see who could get it done faster. Really? And I, I sent a check back with all my work and said, don't ever contact Call me. me again. Yeah. I mean, this was about 10, 15 years ago, but yeah, never. So is sample clearance something that an artist can do on their own? Is it something where you need a sample clear a clearance person to negotiate that has relationships? Do you see where I'm going with this? I am because <laughs> it, it was a good question because I have many people who try to do it on their own and then come to me to clean it up. Right. Because they're like, oh, I sent this request to Sony ATV months ago, but so and so is not responding to me. I'm like, did you submit it correctly? It, you know, it, it, it's a skill. And you know what? When I'm dealing with, you know, uh, I don't know, Madeline Smith, who's now at Universal Music. I don't have one request on her desk. I have 20 requests on her desk. So when I call her and ask how her new granddaughter is, I can also simultaneously ask her the status of my 20 requests and she's putting it in order which ones I need that day versus by Friday or by Monday or what have you. Right. So it's, it's also relationships. And it's very much relationships. It, it, it is. It's relationships. It's making sure that and they have... And it's knowledge. Them. Yeah. You know, like, I find that... that and, and this is what I call you for a lot. Um, I work with all independents. So I'm not as big a fan as sampling as you are. You see it as an art form. I see it as a drain on the artist's financial ownership. Um, so um, very often I'll call you to find out, you know, how, how costly might this be? Like if we sample Biggie, you know, how expensive might that be? And you'll give me a ballpark of what that is. And then from the business side, we can make a decision as to whether it's worth it. You know, does it play such a big role in the song that it's worth that expense? Or is it just a little blurb that's at the very beginning of the song that doesn't make or break the song? And oh. your knowledge is, for me, what has so much value, not to mention your organizational skills of being able to follow this through a process that I would never want to do or could do. Well, yeah, I mean, I do put together budgets a lot of times for people so that when they have a whole album of samples, we can go through it so they can get an idea of what it's going to cost them. <clears throat> then I'll say, you know, if you're indie, how many of these can you replay so that you're eliminating two-thirds of the right. master and turn them into interpolations? Then you go through each one of those and say, well, if you can do an interpolation, can you change it enough so that it's not even a sample versus what you need to keep in there? And so... <clears throat> I will do that for people, and I do ask for a fee for that because it does take up my time. Sure. Um, it's only a couple hundred dollars or what have you. But um, I'm not going to have people give up sampling or interpolating if it really gives that sound to the song. Now, more and more, public, more, and more publishers, I think, are being accommodating. You know, you, most of them charge us, like, non-recoupable fee of like 1500 to $2,000 and if they're multiple publishers that can add up. Wow, that's great. I mean, that's really dropped because when when I was coming up, it, it started at like five grand to $7,500 to sample. Right. We, they've dropped it to these non recoupable fees, but they don't prorate it. So if you've got three publishers and they each want $2,000, that's $6,000. Right. But <clears throat> if you've got a small indie, we try to get it maybe it's $500 of publishers so that it's only 1500 all in. Gotcha. On the master side, Sony... Listen up, people. Sony usually denies independent artists to sample their, their recordings. So try to avoid using Sony Masters unless the policy changes. Um, you know, Universal, I think, is more open to that, maybe because they're looking at the artist as a possibility of signing them. I, I don't know. Um, and Warner, Warner has been really cool about that as well. I think maybe they're, um, they look at it as maybe a possibility as, as, as a launching 
or for them for them to look at new artists. Right. Uh, I, I don't really understand why Sony does something like that. I, I don't either. You know, I, I was on a panel in Tampa in June, and there was a representative from BMG who was giving out um, MP3 sticks to the producers in the audience to encourage them to sample. And it was part of the BMG publishing catalog. And, and I, I thought that was really, really cool. But then I was looking at her like, well, you're giving out suggestions of who to sample but isn't sony the hardest label to clear a sample with like it, it was almost bmg is not sony oh, BMG it's not. okay BMG is a completely different company i didn't realize that they are balls to the wall amazing they have structured stuff the the for the sampling mm -hmm. of their compositions they have reached out their hand to do distribution now for indies like loopy fiasco is being distributed for his new album through BMG, um, I've got a couple of clients that are going to be distributed independently through BMG. Nice. They are the new company, um, and if you want, I can talk. Have you talked to maybe Mark Robinson, who is over there now, who is just amazing. I would love to. And they have music libraries of sounded like sounding stuff, so um, which I've had clients sample from. Um, Very cool. They are. Um, I think they just did a deal with um, Jason Aldean um, on the countryside. BMG. I didn't realize yeah. they weren't part of Sony, though. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah, no, this is a completely, uh, yeah, completely different. I don't know country music. I don't. I don't, I, I don't, I don't either. Yeah, country music fell me. Apparently, it's a big enough deal, though, that, like, it hit my alerts on my phone from um, one of the music newsletters. So, apparently, it's a yeah. big deal. I don't know. Yeah, BMG's doing some <clears throat> amazing stuff. Um, buying up catalogs, also doing great stuff with music videos, like uh, music videos meaning um, shooting productions of shows and getting it out there and doing stuff. Um, I deal with Ed Rosano on a regular basis. There's just a great team of people um, at BMG, and they're doing some amazing stuff. And I was it's working know. because they were growing so fast, I was like, ah, oh, shit. But no, they're doing a really good job. Okay, I think that's Zach Katz at BMG. Yeah, I don't know Zach, but yeah, it is Zach. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he came up in the same era that, that we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. but they're, they're, do, they're doing some great stuff. Cool, thank you. Um, how, how do producers get paid when, they're, when, they, when they make a song with a rapper? How do they get paid? Producers, if you're listening. <laughs> they are. Yeah. You are just not doing the right things and not being looked after and need some serious education. Um, Let's educate them. Tell them. Well, you know, that could be a whole other half hour. Um, then you know what? Save it and we'll do a whole other half hour. Do you oh, have oh, a half hour? I do. Let's come I back. Do. Let's come back. Because I, I feel like I don't do enough for producers. So let's come yeah. back and do just That'd a session be, for producers. Because I think producers are ripped off not taken care of, not educated, and just want their beats used. Absolutely. They just, they just, that's all they want is to be heard. And um, they're killing the industry. Let's, you know what? Let's do a whole section for producers because I feel like I don't do enough for them. Okay. Um, what is, what's been your hardest clearance? Wow. Hardest as in? Challenging. Like the one that after you cleared it, you were like, oh, man. And it That's... could be hard because the deadline was short. It could be hard because you got, say, Sting to clear a song when he never did before. I mean, I've had a lot of those, like, you know, getting Sting cleared for, for, for Puff, for missing you. It was, it was. You know, that was the first time ever he ever, ever yeah. cleared. Ever. Well, the hard part was he was in his castle during a writing session and having to get through to his people to him at his castle to make it happen. Yes, that was great people. Linda Shelgram was at Irving Music at the time. Uh, Suzanne Coffin, who ended up coming to work for me, but she was at Irving Music to work on that. I actually just look, re I, I have all my papers from Biggie, from all my Biggie stuff. I even have the news you people. Really? Wow. Just found when he, he died. I called you that night. Um, yeah. Did you really? Uh, yeah, yeah, we talked that night. He died. Yeah, I was in did. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, we wow. did. Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, that was a big one. That was a big one. Um, 
so, yeah, just I, I reread the paperwork because that that was a really that was a really tough one. But Miss Ross was very difficult and 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 has not been cleared since Biggie, um, and they wanted to pull out of the deal when Biggie was assassinated. And I have to use the word assassinated, not murder. Right. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, um, she wanted to pull out of the deal, and I wouldn't let her because we had all the paperwork signed. And so they, they did agree to keep to the deal. So that, that was pretty difficult. Um, but, I mean, challenges-wise, I mean, one of Drake's projects, like they gave it to me on a Friday and said they needed to clear by a Saturday. I mean, Whoa. and, 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 and I, 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 he's, He's got like the nicest team of people like Mr. Morgan and Future are really kind and nice people. And so when they tease me with stuff like that, it's it's like a, it's a challenge and I'm okay because they're not disrespectful. They're really, really good and sweet people to me when, when I work on stuff like that. Um, you know, I kind of explained on J. Cole's last album, um, Abraham, his manager, <clears throat> it was the week before Thanksgiving and he was on the phone helping me with deals reaching out to Japan, so kind-hearted in working with me personally to get the clearances done. Wow. Um, Kendrick Lamar, we had the product three months before the label did, um, goosebumps of, of material, which I think was even better than what was actually released. Um, and so that was a challenge because we why weren't allowed... Why are they different? To... Why, would, why would there be a difference between what's submitted to you and then what finally comes out that the people hear? Is that budgetary? There's a lot of stuff. I mean, samples get pulled. So I have stuff that with samples in it that never made the cut. Right. Um, that's one thing. And then I'm not A&R. And I'm not... Um, this is why, you know, I am a music supervisor on some stuff, but this is why I really don't choose a music supervisor. What I think is good sounding, what other people think is good sounding are two different things. And Kendrick's album, prior to the release had a really rough sound to it. Okay. And what was released was smooth was smoothed over in production. And I liked the really rough sound. You liked sound. the rough sound, didn't you? Yeah. I really did. So but Stuff that's it's not too polished. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, that too. That that that's me. You know, what do I know? Like when Mace came out, I was just like, what the fuck? This is the worst sounding thing. He's off key. Why why are these girls swooning? And then he did phenomenal back yeah. in, in like whatever. Platinum. So yeah, I know I've got the thing in my wall. But I mean it's like <laughs> What do, what do I know what people are going to like? You know, I right. I don't know what people are going to like. You don't necessarily no understand. Does. That's why we test music. What's going to be a hit and what's not going to be a hit. I know what I like personally, you know, because I find some of these writers are like poets. And some of these producers are so creative in what they in what they do. Right. And when they make things together and, and are unique. And so that's just my personal thing that I love. Um Challenges wise, you know, um, here's a little ditty. Here's a little story. Ditty, pun intended. Um, I, had, I had met with uh, Business and Legal Affairs at Warner Chapel saying that Led Zeppelin had opened the doors to be sampled. And we went to a Warner Chapel team of writers and artists, um, Junior Mafia. And, un, and remember, Un Rivera. Remember and there's, un. Mm -hmm. So they had come up with. Uh, doing this whole uh, Led Zeppelin sample. And they brought it to Puff to see what Puff thought. Puff loved it. And Puff, Puff took it. Jimmy. <laughs> and it ended up being a duet with Jimmy, if we all recall. Nice. Yeah. It's a great song. Great song. But, so what, you know, what, were you, what was your most fun clearance? Do you have any like really fun memories of clearing stuff? Like where you just really enjoyed it? Again, Ken, Kendrick was a lot of fun. Um, really good people, good lawyer, good management, good team of people. Um, working with Marshall, working on Marshall's album has always been a pleasure. Again, good good management. I work with Tracy. Um, really, just, uh, yeah. Really, I have the good fortune of working with nice people, and if I don't think they're nice, I I don't work with them or I fire them, and that's really I love really that about you. Because um, you set you know, boundaries, and you're I, good I, at that. We're not curing cancer, and we're not working on world peace, although we need to. Um, we are creating entertainment and music. Right. And I don't just sample clearances. I mean, I work on rock star video games. I do movies. I do documentaries. I do television. I do a lot of stuff. And um, we have to remember that we are here to make music 
We're here to create entertainment. We're here to create stuff for people to enjoy. And we need to remember that because that's what this is all about. If you're not having fun, get the hell out and find another career. Right. And that's what my company's all about and my staff and my staff knows it. Um, and I have a good staff and I make sure that they are taken care of. And if they're having a rough day, go take a break. Go, go take a walk or go hug your child or your dog or what have you. And, and that's what this is all about. And so we try to make all of our projects fun. It's really important. I love that. Okay, so how, how does somebody get a hold of you? Like the guys out here watching that need to reach out to DMG clearances, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You know, I, I'm going to say go to my website first because it has a lot of information, the www.dmgclearances.com. It has my prices right there on the website. So there's like no bullshit there. I love that. And I do that too. I just think everything should be transparent. I am the most transparent person you could ever imagine. Yes. I um, Maybe that's why we like each other. It could be. <laughs> and then it also explains you know, what my services include. You want to know who my clients are? It's there. You want to know what I look like? My picture's there. <laughs> uh, my staff's pictures. My dogs. The DMG dogs are on, our, on my website. The DMG dogs. I love it. <laughs> Can Gangster come play? Can we have a play date for our dogs? <laughs> exactly. So I say go to my website first. And then if you're going to come to me, don't just say, well, how do I do it? Or you know, what can you do for me or anything like that? Come prepared with a, with a question. This is my song. This is my sample. Is this clearable? What's the budget? Do you have concerns? Be direct. And I don't need your life story. It's, right. you know, really. And email is the best way to reach you. And email is the Same best here. way. Because, Same here. You know, if you were to walk into my office, there are three phones in front of me and a laptop and a desktop. And I'm multitasking the entire time. And so if you email me, if it's not me, you know, Rachel or someone from my office, my whole team is um, qualified to answer questions. So um, we make sure that everyone's taken care of. And just say, uh, Wendy Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love it. I already attended. Drop my name. Relationships. Exactly. Awesome. Deborah, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more than words could ever say DMG clearances look below I've got a link to her website um, Deb thank you so much my pleasure thank you